Okay, the Vatos, thanks again for tuning in to yet another video. I'm famous coming at you live from the West Coast yet again, San Jose, California. So first things first, uh, check out the uh, description down below for all the specialty tools needed for this job. All right, everything has Amazon links. Super easy for you guys to kind of follow and just kind of add everything together. Make this a little bit easier so you're not traveling back and forth to the uh, to the uh, Harbor Freight store or whatever you want to get them. So anyways, as you guys can see, drain your primary. All right. So that's the best way to kind of get this thing started. You drain your primary while you, of course, remove your foot controls, remove your uh, shifter, and then you remove the primary cover. So pretty straightforward. Uh, the first four bolts are the longest bolts. Remember that. Keep that in mind. Write a little note. The first four bolts on the primary cover are the longest ones. So remember, specialty tools, this is where you're going to need them. So this is the T70. Man of War recommends you using this bolt. So don't use anything else. If you, have, if you don't have this T70, go to your local dealership and pick it up. So let's move on to the clutch basket. You got to get some uh, some snap ring pliers. I had a few different um, a few different uh, tools available. This one seems the one. This this one seems to be the one that worked the best. So remember, we are breaking uh, uh, with the. Uh, you guys can see right here. This is a breaker bar. So we don't have the bike lifted. This is something that I've always mentioned in all my install videos. Anything that requires a lot of torque or a lot of uh, you know pressure these bolts are cranked down they're torqued down to 80 foot pounds and of course the comp is cranked down to 150 foot pounds of, of torque so remember um, just you know just to be on the safe side you do this on the kickstand that way you don't accidentally flip your bike over if you don't have it tied down with straps or something like that so and also remember this is a left-handed thread uh, bolt or not on the clutch basket. So remember righty is loosey and lefty is tidy for this one All right, you got to make sure you do that properly You don't want to you know cross thread or rip out this this nut and do more damage to the bike uh, Remember remember okay lefty tidy righty loosey for the clutch basket. So um, That one also requires a specialty socket an inch and three sixteenths. That's what you need so once we have all of this, you know, loosened, then we could, you can see at the bottom of the bike, I already have it lifted. The reason why we lift it or the reason why we level it is to prevent the uh, clutch basket and the comp from falling out. Or when you're installing it back, it just makes it a little bit easier if you're not fighting gravity at the same time because of, uh, of the angle of the bike. So this is the reason why we went ahead and used the jack stand now. So we don't have to, like I said, we're, we're not putting our weight on on the ratchet or, or on the breaker bar and adding that problem. So you guys can see the tensioner. I went ahead and used some zip ties just to prevent it from shooting out, just to make it a little bit easier to pull out. So you could do that yourself. Just a little bit of a tip. Uh, just slide a zip tie. So this is something that I've noticed that a lot of the other install videos do. They remove the clutch basket and the comp. You don't have to do that, all right? You don't have to do that. All you got to do is pull the the clutch back, the clutch basket slightly out. You'll see right here. I don't entirely remove it. You can see how where I stopped, and that makes it a ton easier to remove the comp. So this is where if you have a new ramp, you could actually just go ahead and install that. Now you remove the the uh, the ramp, and then you re uh, and then you reinstall your comp. And you're pretty much done but I'm removing it all so you can see the clutch basket is still in place you don't have to remove it you don't have to juggle the comp and the clutch basket together all right so we set that bolt for the comp at 20 foot-pounds just to see of course the tolerance between the cam sorry the comp and the clutch basket so you can see it's pretty much straightforward uh, this is where I mentioned in later video where i don't get much noise and that could be it so remember we have the clutch basket you can see that it's fully inserted and then of course i go ahead and i just pull it out i believe i must have edited it out but i'll probably put it back in so you can see the clutch basket is inside like i said this makes it a lot easier 
uh, when it comes to juggling the comp and the clutch basket together to get it installed because it could be a little bit of an issue. So here's something maybe it'll help you guys out. That way you're not struggling if you're a one-man uh, show, kind of like myself. So you can see everything's fitted properly. Everything's going nice and smoothly. Like I said, the bike is leveled. So we have to use red Loctite for the T70. It is crucial for you to do this. All right. So I, you know, I just dabbed it in a little bit. You could also clean the bolt up. You guys can see that I did not clean the bolt up. Probably you should probably clean the bolt up. So keep in mind uh, what we're doing here. We're just, you know, adding the bolts. I haven't, like I said, I'm not torquing it while it's on the kickstand i don't have tie downs on the bike so this is just me putting the the loctite blue loctite on the clutch basket and red loctite on the comp ring make sure remember 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 the clutch back the clutch basket nut is a left-handed thread so you can see me turning it counterclockwise and it's of course threading in and it's sitting down so what i'm doing here of course i'm just making sure the bolts are well seated uh once i decide that I'm going to start setting these bolts up to torque spec, I remove the jack stand. So now it's on the kickstand. So what we do with the with the comp, of course, uh, we set it to 100 foot pounds of torque, and we put our weight on it until it makes the you know that sound. I was having a little bit of an issue with it, but I was you know I was able to get it in there. Remember to keep on you know make sure you keep on moving this. Uh, this lock or this urethane block. So now what we're doing here is we're undoing it one full turn. So this is the specs per Harley Davidson. All right, one you back out the T70 bolt one full turn and then you set the torque spec to 150 pounds. Now, let me tell you guys, uh, I have, of course, the owner's manual. They claim 145 foot pounds, man of war, wants you to set this at 170 foot pounds so i'm not too sure which one should you go with i've seen other install videos where they set it to 145 my torque wrench of course only goes up to 150 foot pounds so that's where i set it at unfortunately uh man of war wants 170 so maybe you could if you have a, a 200 foot pound torque wrench you might be able to set it so here we go once again left-handed thread remember left-handed thread thread so this one we're setting it at 80 foot pounds of torque uh there isn't anything about backing it out or anything like that this one i just set it at 80 foot pounds of torque and we we're pretty much done so remember you put in everything as it goes in snap ring pliers and uh you know try not to move this nut unless you're trying to adjust your clutch okay so keep that in mind if you're messing with the adjustment of your clutch uh, of your clutch lever make sure you know try not to move around this stuff too much or else you'll probably end up giving yourself a little bit more work so let's move on to the tensioner uh, this is the hiding m6 tensioner i've tried a few different shims on this uh hiding m6 or hyden they want uh three eight spacing between the shoe and the bottom of their tensioner so i was having a little bit of a difficulty with the shims they were really really tight uh, i'm just showing you guys how the mini the, the mini spring goes on the inside of the of the other spring and then of course that you know there isn't anything that's holding this stuff together the only thing that's holding the shoe and the tensioner and the base of the tensioner is the actual chain all right, so there isn't anything that you're missing in case you're wondering. So like I mentioned, Hayden, Hayden actually wants a 3 8 spacing between the bottom and the shoe. I checked the, uh, of course, the play of the chain. Uh, it, it was at about, it, it's at about a half an inch right there on this one. I decided to go ahead and try to push up the shim, of course, with uh, Hayden that wanted, like I mentioned, they wanted three eighths of an inch. Uh, I went ahead and I installed the, 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 the smaller one. And then I noticed it wasn't much of a difference. I went ahead and I added the thicker one. And then that's when I noticed the chain was kind of super tight. Uh, it was at about three eighths of an inch in, uh, in play. And that's the reason why I decided to go ahead and go back 
to the smaller shim so you can see what i did here you know it is a little bit of weight you have of course the chain and then you have the springs so you could just put a flathead and lift it and of course thread the bolt and you're pretty much set to go so like i mentioned uh, based on height and specs this is what they wanted a three eighths of an inch uh, from the base to the shoe but like i mentioned it just felt super super tight and i didn't want to put that strain on the crank sorry on the comp and on the clutch basket so super super tight i went ahead and i decided to uninstall the tensioner and then use the smaller shim and that gave me a good in between uh a good between between what Hayden wants and of course what uh crank uh crank course wants which is about a half an inch of play harley davidson with her tensioner is five eighths in case you're wondering if you're using your stock uh, tensioner, then you want the play of your chain to be at about five eighths, five eighths of, of, of an inch. So a little bit over half an inch. So went ahead, installed everything, just showing you the spacing. It's a little bit over a quarter inch. It's about a quarter inch, but uh, it doesn't make a lot of noise now. All right, and you'll, you'll be able to listen in on the noise. So here I'm just giving you guys another tip on how to hold the uh, the primary gasket at the same time you're of course installing the primary cover uh, unfortunately the camera cut off on the right side so i used two bolts to kind of hold the gasket in place while i installed the uh, the cover so you know remember 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 that the four bolts on the left the front four bolts are the longer bolts so uh this is just me showing you guys the uh the, the drain plug on the primary i went ahead and i used um the uh, teflon tape and i and i used a new o-ring so unfortunately i made the mistake of forgetting to install the plug and i had my measurement of primary fluid precisely for this job and because i i accidentally forgot to install the uh, the plug uh, I had it just go by off of, you know, just vision. And of course I showed, I shared the numbers of what Harley wants, uh, per the manual. All right. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching yet another video. Hopefully this helps you guys decide between which, uh, option you want to go. Like I said, if you want to keep it stock, go with the Baxter or go with the, uh, the ramp. Uh, if you want a little bit more responsiveness, a little bit more torque. And, uh, and you don't mind potentially the noise or the sound of the comp, then probably the amount of work, you know, is probably your option. So, uh, life's a risk. Get out there and ride. Bye.